Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about gravitational potential energy. Just before we get started though, I have a multiple choice question for you. So if you could just go ahead and pause that video and find out which statement is true. And the correct answer is B, the gravitational potential energy decreases the closer an object is to the surface of the Earth. Now, why are A and C wrong? First of all, the gravitational field strength is 9.81 meters per second per second, but only on average. Because the Earth is a spinning sphere, it's actually a little bit flatter towards the top. So that means that if you're sitting on the North Pole, you're actually a little bit closer to the center of gravity of, uh, of the Earth compared to if you were sat on the equator. So the first statement is, I'm afraid, wrong. Uh, C, the gravitational potential energy increases the closer an object is uh, to the earth well that's actually not true for example if you imagine dropping something just a really, really simple example if you drop something from uh, let's say a height h it will um, gain a certain velocity v now if you drop something from height let's say 100 h it will gain a much higher velocity, let's call that velocity V2, and V2 is going to be significantly higher than V, which means that it will have so much more kinetic energy in this conversion from potential to kinetic energy. Okay, well, we can see that potential energy is very, very interesting. Now, let's have a good look into the formula for potential energy. Our first job would be to actually define gravitational potential energy at a point in space. What do we mean by this? Well, let's have a look at an example. We have a certain object which would be moving from position 1 to position 2 in a gravitational field, in particular the gravitational field of this planet over here. When we are moving from position 1 to position 2, there need to be two things that are happening. First of all, we know that there's going to be a gravitational force pointing towards the center of gravity of the planet. So I'm just going to write down over here that we have a gravitational force. I'm going to call that Fg. Additionally, we're going to move a distance r as you're moving from position 1 to position 2. So we have force and we have distance traveled. Oh yes, you're right. We are talking about work done. And remember, the work done will actually be equal to the change in energy and in particular the change in gravitational potential energy. So gravitational potential energy is actually defined as the following. So let me just zoom out a little bit more. It's the work done in bringing a mass from infinity to a point in the gravitational field. The significance in infinity of infinity for gravitational potential energy will explain in my next video. However, let's think about this as the, um, as the case in which we take point one to be quite extreme, so it's sufficiently far away uh, that we can assume it to be infinity. For example, we can put it sort of over here or even way, way, way out further. Anyways, the formula for gravitational potential energy is, uh, is the following. So let's say that the gravitational potential energy is E. I'm going to give it a little subscript like this. Um, this is going to equal to minus GMM over R. Now I can definitely imagine that you guys are probably asking yourselves what has happened to the good old E is equal to mgh equation. Well, we actually have a little problem with this equation when we're trying to study things on a planetary, on a galactic level. And whenever we, let's say we have an object a few meters above the surface of the Earth and we drop that object, we're perfectly fine using mgh. However, this equation here assumes that the g remains constant no matter what 
height it is above the gravitational field. But remember, g is actually minus gm of r squared. So g does vary with the distance to the gravitational uh, center of, of, of the planet. So we can actually only apply this equation very close to the surface of the Earth. In fact, if we were dealing with two objects on a more planetary scale, then we'll need to apply the new equation that we've just learned, that the gravitational potential energy is equal to minus gmm over r. If you are taking the OCR exam board, um, it is given in your formula booklet as the following it just simply says energy like so is equal to minus gmm of r in this equation m is the in this case would be the mass of the earth or mass of one of the objects let's so let's say mass mass of the earth this m over here will be the mass of the object G is just the the good old gravitational constant, which is uh, my, uh, 6.67 times 10 to the power of minus 11, and R is your distance to the center of the Earth. So you can just write that distance to the center of the Earth, which is really really important. Okay, folks. Now in my next video, I'm going to derive this equation. So yeah. Please stay put. If there are any questions, feel free to uh, ask me a question via comment and I shall see you in the next video.